Hey, how are you doing today? I was asked by a few people recently if I could do a video on terrain, flocking, basing, that sort of thing. There's going to be some new stuff I haven't talked about before. There's definitely going to be a few things I've covered in other videos. And most importantly, there's probably going to be some stuff that I learned from watching other crafters on YouTube. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive guide. This is just how I make terrain cheap and cheerful. Now, for a quick little story. <laughs> this is Terran 2.0. Two years ago, I had some friends help me with an ambitious project, taking my life cast. At the time, I wanted one for sculpting prosthetics, making masks, and other miscellaneous headgear to have another head to help me with costume and makeup projects. And if I'm being honest, I never thought for a second I'd be using the mold to make miniature terrain, but here we are. If you're starting out and trying to keep things ultra low budget, I've made several projects using cardboard and foam board for my base, with little to no issues of warping. If you want to mitigate that even more, get some duct tape and apply that to the bottom first. If you have the tools to cut wood or MDF for thicker bases, thick plies save lives. I usually end up getting most of these materials from dumpster diving around the city. Since my plaster face has some weight to it, and I can't be bothered cutting wood out in the rain, I'm going with some plasterboard that I also found in the trash. Once you're happy with your base, it's time for the first layer of ground cover. Regardless of the setting for your model, if it's outdoors, you want some texture over that smooth base. Almost every piece of terrain you've seen on this channel starts with sand and glue. I get some really fine sand from the beach, wash and bake it, and then when it's dry, I have some reliable ground cover. As a disclaimer, if you take things from nature, you need to clean and bake them. Here's a pro gamer move. If you want to get color into this first layer while you wait for glue to dry, add paint to your glue. From there, I like to add some variety into the texture of the ground cover, specifically with some coffee ground cover. <laughs> Leftover coffee makes for interesting rough dirt patches and since I have a coffee grinder, I can get a different coarseness out of the grounds for different textures after I've had the sweet, sweet go-go juice. If you or someone you love is addicted to tea, save those tea bags. That's more free flock. Again, all of which I would thoroughly dry out in the oven. Some people use fancy chalk pastels as dust and dirt. Well, if you're really desperate, how about using ground cinnamon instead? And as a bonus, your model now smells like baked goods. For my third trick, I like to use tree bark to build up terrain. And like you've probably guessed, since I live in New Zealand, I am hashtag blessed to have access to the holy grail of tree bark, Pahutakawa, AKA tree beards bark from Lord of the Rings. Tree? I am no tree. And you can often just use them as is or paint them up to look like stone. If you can't go outside for whatever reason, get creative. I have a video that covers making stalactites and stalagmites out of egg cartons. You can also just use small rocks and stones as your rocks and stones, pieces of old plaster, chunks of failed sculpy monsters, and even just tinfoil with paint. If you're like me and you don't want to shell out your hard-earned dough on fake trees and rocks, you gotta improvise. For some finishing touches, we want that good good green. I'd be lying if I said I didn't prefer to use hobby grade flocking for this step. And I'm lucky that I can get a variety of fake plants, leaves and flowers from local dollar stores. But if you aren't as lucky, you can totally use old spices that have been sitting in the back of your cupboard since 2006. If you have an old scouring brush that's green, chop that bad boy up until you have some tiny grass and moss. I highly recommend just setting aside a day to plan, gather, and organize as much flock as you can get your hands on. 
Future you will be stoked when they have their greens good to go so they can grow big and strong. Okay, I guess we should finally talk about my face. I mixed up some fast set plaster and planned on adding some black paint to help tint it gray. Once I realized how much paint this was gonna take, I quickly abandoned that idea and just focused on controlling the mess and getting the last of my plaster into the mold. Also, for the record, the gloves were just so I could quickly go from mixing to touching my camera. Once the plaster was set, I got to do something I imagine at least a few people have wanted to try. Ooh, and while I'm at it, I've always wanted a smaller nose. Perfect. While I'm piecing my ruined face back together, I just want to get the YouTuber thing out of the way and say thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Seeing how much this channel has grown in the past year still breaks my brain. I feel incredibly grateful for all the likes and comments and everything in between. It not only helps the channel grow with analytics, but it also keeps me motivated to keep building and making things. All right, final countdown. Using some construction grade Gorilla Glue, a little trick I picked up from my friend Eric over at Eric's Hobby Workshop, the plaster face and rubble is permanently affixed to the base. From there, I seal the plaster with a mixture of PVA and water and can move on to painting it gray with a tiny bit of blue added in. While the paint is still wet, I sprinkle baking soda to texture up the stone. The longest part of this project was waiting for things to dry. So I would set it up in front of a fan and pass the time watching more Star Trek. I'm up to DS9 now, by the way. I moved to a series of lighter and lighter dry brushing with more gray paint, followed by a selective black wash. Then to a dry brush with white, and an even more selective brown wash. The final touches were using the best green wash I have ever mixed up in my life. Like seriously, this shade of green is perfect and I'm so mad I'll never get it this right again. Anyway, this helps me plan out where I would glue down the flock afterwards. A few grass tufts here and there. Some little yellow flower reed type plant thingies. And from there, we're done. All right, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is a very unique piece of terrain. And I certainly don't expect any of you to go out and get life casted just to try to recreate it. But I do hope that this video inspired you at least a little bit to make some awesome terrain. If you found any one of the tips uh, new or helpful, let me know in the comments. Um, and if you plan on building something after watching this, I, I would love to see it. So, you know, feel free to send me a message or tag me on social media. And as always, I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye.